Good morning and happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, I am so glad to be here and I welcome you. I'm Pastor Ann with Sharonville United Methodist Church. We're so glad to be here. Uh, we thank the choir and the handbells and we have dancers this morning. So we thank everyone for um, coming and celebrating that our Christ has risen today. All right, with that, I'd like to um, ask you to just pass the love and peace of Jesus Christ this morning with each other and wish each other a happy Easter. Good morning. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Are you ready to sing? All right, but we're going to here in just a minute. Join me in our call of worship this morning. Morning has broken, but this morning is different. We've come to visit the grave of a friend, but he is not here. The sun is risen in our hearts. Darkness and death are defeated. Now we understand what Christ said, what God did. Now we proclaim Christ is risen. Hallelujah. All right, page 322. Up from the grave, he wrote. Praise your joy. 
verse. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. May this declaration resound not only in these walls, but touch the lives of all we meet and forever be the truth of which we speak. Your love, once sown with a garden, tended for your own people, neglected and rejected, now spreads its sweet perfume in this place and everywhere we go. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You may be seated. Good morning. Uh, my name is Morgan Rose. I'm the youth leader and youth director here at Sharonville United Methodist Church. But this morning, I'm going to lead a short skit of volunteers. So could I have the children come on up here. I'm going to take all the children up here. And we are going to put together a couple things real quick for us to remind us of what happened before Easter Sunday. All right. Good morning. How are you guys, how are you guys feeling this morning? Tired. tired? <laughs> what, what, why are we tired? Because you woke us up at 7 in the morning to do an Easter egg hunt. It's still too early, I don't care. <laughs> Somebody might be too old for Easter candy. <laughs> I'll remember that. All right, how about you guys? You guys okay? There we go. They wore ties and they're okay. Come on. All right, so today is Easter Sunday, but I need you to help me. Last Sunday was something special. Somebody raise a hand. Remind me, what was last Sunday? Tell me. Palm Sunday. It was Palm Sunday. So seven days ago, Jesus entered Jerusalem. He came into Jerusalem, and all the people got together, and what did they do? Show me. Oh, come on, more. Give me some more. Yeah, there we go. They were so excited that Jesus came into Jerusalem for the Passover week. So all those folks were gathered together. Um, what did Jesus do the week that he was in Jerusalem? This, these past five days, what was Jesus doing? You guys know? If you were at the last service, you would know. <laughs> Riding donkeys. He read. <laughs> she said, "Riding donkeys." <laughs> I think he might have just ridden one donkey. There may have just been one donkey, but that is true. He rode in on a donkey. That is true. That was when they were waving the palms. Give me something else Jesus did during the past week. He did some teaching. He, he rode donkeys and did some teaching. We have a Western theme this morning. <laughs> rode donkeys and did some teaching. He did teach a little bit. One more thing I want everybody to remember, that during this last week, most of the disciples didn't know it was the last week. They still thought, even though Jesus had warned them, they still thought he was going to be the king on earth. They thought he was going to take over, be the Messiah. So they were waiting for that. But there's one other thing he did during this past week. You guys, they were at the last service. They're not just geniuses. <laughs> he went to the temple, and what did he do, Eva? He um, got a whip. Whip. Because everybody was selling and marketing there, and he whipped people out of the temple. Yeah. I, 
I said to the, the group at the 930 service, imagine you went to Walmart with mom or dad, and they just kind of got mad, and they grabbed a belt off the rack and started whipping people and driving people out of Walmart. What kind of face would you make? <laughs> I think the disciples were surprised too. Now, Jesus had righteous anger because they were using the temple for making money. And so he drove them out. That happened during this week. On Thursday night, the disciples and Jesus got together for the Last Supper. They ate together. Somebody tell me, what were the two important things that they shared that Jesus told them to remember? What were the two special items at that Last Supper? Bread and wine. You had them both? Say it again. Bread and wine. Yeah. That's where we have communion from. We, we break the bread, that is Jesus' body. We shared the cup, Jesus' blood. So that happened Thursday night. And then Jesus was arrested. He was beaten. He was tortured. And then he was put on a cross to die on Friday. Now we call that Good Friday because we know what happened next. But the disciples, they didn't get it still. They were terrified. But this is where we're picking up today's story is from John chapter 20. And I need a couple of volunteers. So can I have all of you come sit on the front two benches first? Because I'm going to need a little room up here. All right, you can sit on that side. Aaron, can you sit on this side? How about you go with me? That way they're not alone. We need a tie on that side. You can't just have ties on one side. All right. So I need, I already talked with Eva. Eva, come on up here. Eva, you are going to be one of the followers of Jesus, and your name is? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. This is John chapter 20. All right? You did it in the last one. All right. And so I also need a John. I need a disciple named John. Do I have a John volunteer? All right. Liz, you could be a John you got to grow a beard. Get on it. All right. So I've got a, a Mary, I've got a John, and I need a Peter. Can I get a Peter? Yes. He's like, seriously? Yes. So you're going to be Peter. All right. You guys come right here. Come right here. Can I get up there? Yeah. So what happened? Jesus was put on a cross Friday. He was taken down and put into the tomb. The disciples went back to the house they were staying in. And they all look terrified. <laughs> that is a terrible, terrified face. Give me ter there we go. <laughs> they were terrified because they thought that the authorities would come get them next. So Saturday was the Jewish Sabbath. So they stayed inside on, on that Saturday. But on, for them, the first day of the week was Sunday. All three of you go back to the house. Back of the, back of the room there. That's the house. They're in the house. They're sleeping in. Except for Mary Magdalene. There we go. At dawn, Mary Magdalene came to the garden. Ah, production value. <laughs> and Mary Magdalene came up to the tomb. All right. Don't ask me what I did with the rest of the budget. So Mary Magdalene came up to the tomb. And she looked inside, and it was empty. Now this is important for us. They thought they'd find a body. I told you, they didn't quite get it. So she didn't find a body, and she got nervous, and so she ran back to the disciples. And she said something like, they took Jesus and he's not there in the tomb. And so then John and Peter came running up to the tomb in the garden. Slow down. There we go. John was a little younger. So John got there first. And he ran up and he stopped just outside the tomb. And he looked in and he couldn't see the body. And then Peter caught up and Peter shoved him out of the way. <laughs> Stunt value players. And Peter went into the tomb. <laughs> <laughs> and
And Peter saw the wrappings of Christ laid there on the stone bench. That they had, they had wrapped him in this fine linen. And it was there, but there was no body. And so Peter came out, and he looked at John, and John looked at Peter, and they made that, oh my gosh, face. And they ran back to the disciples. And Mary Magdalene had been walking back. And so this is John chapter 20. We're starting at verse... Here, put that on. No? It's playing against type for you. It's going to be great. No? 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 He's got a part. So Mary Magdalene came back to the two. And she looked inside and she didn't see Jesus. And she fell down. Or kneeled. And she began to cry. And then there were two angels, and they said, Woman, why are you crying? <laughs> they took away the body of my Lord. Wait, wait, wait. They took away the body of my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. When Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not recognize him. Woman, woman why are you crying? Uh, woman, why are you crying? Who, who are you looking for? Did you take him away, sir? Tell me where you put him. I will go and get him. Mary. Rabboni. You don't need to hold on to me. I, I have not yet gone back to, my, to the Father. But go to the followers and tell them this. I am going back to my Father and your Father. I'm going to back to my to my God and to in your God. I am going back to my father and your father, back to your God and my God. And Mary Magdalene said, "Oh my gosh!" and ran back to tell the disciples. <laughs> Can I have a round of applause for these folks? Morgan for all of that orchestration. He, they did a great job, did they not? So uh, it's time for us to lift up our hearts uh, to God this morning as we thank him for coming here, for rising, for giving us life. And then we also take this time to give him our intentions for all the things and the chaos that goes in our lives uh, we just lift it up this morning. Several people in our bulletin need our prayers, Ed and Barry and Eileen, as they continue to heal. And um, does anyone have anyone else they'd like to lift up this morning? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are in awe and wonder that you gave your life for us. We know that you love us, and we know that you walk with us every day. Lord, we thank you for the times when we are on the mountaintop. We thank you for being with us in the times that we're in the valleys and chaos is around us in our lives. We pray that your presence would always be known by us, and that each person that needs healing Ed and Lynn and Eileen and Barry, all of those in our family and our friends. Lord, we just pray that your presence would heal them in body, mind, and soul. Lord, we lift this up in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, who also taught us how to pray. I want you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is our time to give back to God with our tithes and our offerings. Inside your bulletin is an envelope that looks like this. Our Easter offering is dedicated to a lot of our local missions. Um, Sharonville Elementary School, we are expanding the Power Pack program. We deliver food to uh, 50 to 60 kids every week that need food over the weekend. And we will expand that in summer to deliver food weekly to those, some of those same families. Um, also, the summer school program there needs workbooks, and we need to fund some of the transportation uh, buses for the, the kids that are tutored. In addition, these funds will be used as we reach out to our community with music and drama programs and um, go out and, and just serve in our community at the rec center, at the art center, wherever it is we can engage in some of the creative and performing arts. So with that, I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward as we give back to God with our tithes and offerings.
Almighty God and King, we come and kneel before you as our King and Savior. We thank you for giving your life. We thank you for the blessings you have poured down upon us and the ways you have touched us and made yourself known to us. Lord, we give these gifts back to you as a sure and certain sign of our love for you. Bless them and multiply them that everyone that would receive these gifts would know your name. We lift this up in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our reading is from the Gospel of John. All four of the Gospels have a a resurrection story, but this is the one from John. And you just saw it acted out. I'm not sure how to follow that. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Okay. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture what Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Thank you. You know, there's this um, dividing line, if you will, in history. And I don't think it's B.C. versus A.D., And I don't even think it's a page in the Old Testament and New Testament where it's right in the middle and it divides between the Gospels and the Old Testament. I think it is Jesus' entire life. It's kind of, if you will, like a thick line that goes through time. And this thick line starts with Jesus being born in swaddling clothes to the time where those burial linens were laying in the tomb. And it's all of this that encompasses a change in how things were in the world. And if you think about it, from the very beginning of time, when Adam and Eve were first created, they were put in a garden. Our whole story, all of God's story, it starts in a garden. And Adam and Eve are in this garden, and they have the pleasure and the ability to walk with God in the garden. It is a perfect world for them. There is no chaos, no sin. It is so nice. But as we all know, Adam and Eve fell from sin and sinned. They disobeyed God. So they were cast out of the garden into the world. Well, our story today leaves us or we go back into the garden. This is where Jesus is. Jesus' tomb is in the garden. It's no coincidence that this tomb is in the garden. This is where God planted it. It's no coincidence. We have a garden scene. We thank the hospitality team, by the way, and Candy and everyone for putting our scene together. So we're in this garden where Jesus' tomb is And we see the reversal of what happened with Adam and Eve. It's a reversal. It's a renewal. Jesus is the second Adam. And he's come to set it straight. So that we can have relationship with God and that we can be in the garden ultimately in eternity. So that we can participate. Now... In our scripture reading today, and I'm going to jump around a little bit so Kathy, I might, um, I don't know how, if you'll be able to keep up with me or not. But Jesus, so if the, if the screen confuses you, just listen to me. <laughs> Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene, and she's outside the tomb crying as the, girl, as the girls had um, acted out, Morgan had acted out. And I want you to know that she just doesn't know what's going on. So she keeps asking. She asks the angels. She asks this man. The man she's asking in the garden, she thinks is a gardener. It's Jesus, but she thinks it's a gardener. So she asks, like, 
So, so the Jesus asked, why are you crying? And in the midst of this, Jesus says and calls her name, says, Mary, Mary. And it's in the instance when Jesus calls Mary's name that she recognizes who Jesus is. Each of us are called by name. Each of us are called by name by God. God loves each and every one of us. Jesus loves each and every one of us just like he loved Mary. And he calls us by name so we can hear him, so we can hear him in our lives. So it kind of begs the question is, why don't we hear him sometimes? Why don't we hear Jesus? Why don't we hear God speaking? Well, sometimes, like Mary, she's not expecting it. She's expecting something totally different. She just doesn't expect it. But even when you expect it, sometimes you can't hear. Elijah is a perfect example of this in the Old Testament. God says to Elijah, stand outside this cave. I'm going to pass by. In 1 Kings chapter 19, it says, Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains, tore it apart, and shattered the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. And then it says, An earthquake came, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And then a fire came. Notice all these powerful things, but God and Jesus are not in the power. Jesus is in the love, and it's in that moment when Elijah is waiting that God whispers to him. And that's what we have to listen for is that still, small voice that comes from Jesus. Because when Jesus appears to Mary, he just says Mary, like he would every day, Mary, and he recognizes the name. We have to be listening for that still, small voice to know that Jesus is in our lives. Jesus rose from the dead, and I'd like to say that love rises on that day. Love rose on that day. Because Jesus never came in with power and might. The Pharisees, the Romans, everyone expected a conqueror. But Jesus comes with love, and that changes the world. That changes everything. That resurrection power is based on total love for you and for me. There's a, uh, there's a story, it's a true story, and there's a movie made out of it. Um, it's called Indivisible. Has anyone seen the movie Indivisible? Got one, okay, one person. All right, this is a very powerful story. It's based on a true story. Darren Turner and his wife, Darren is a chaplain and in the Army. So he just graduates from seminary and just gets through basic training and is now stationed at Fort Stewart. And he and his wife and their three kids, an 8-year-old girl, a 6-year-old boy, and a 10-month-old are trying to get settled in this house. So they get starting to get settled, and uh, President Bush at the time, this is in 2007, deploys 20,000 troops to Iraq, and he's part of that deployment. And so you can see Darren in this spot before he goes. He is so excited to share Jesus with everyone, right? He is, he's excited and once he's just gung-ho. And um, what happens is both Heather and Darren go through some very difficult times. Heather remains at home for the 15 months, takes care of three children on her own, and also engages with the families to help minister to them for their losses. So in particular, there's a young woman, has a baby, and finds out she's pregnant right after her husband leaves, and her husband is killed um, when he's actually with Darren. 
So we see Heather going through traumatic pain and loss and no one to lean on, right? She is really by herself, just a couple of other women to lean on. Her husband isn't there with her and she's leaned on her husband a lot and they were, they were so close. So meanwhile, Darren's over here in Iraq and he's going through some horrific pain and loss in Iraq. He sees women, uh, children killed, his buddy, the same young man that left the wife. He baptizes this young man and he gives him this coin because he's passing out these coins for the armor of God for protection, that he would have God's protection. And the young man is killed in, in one of the attacks. Darren comes back a changed person. He is distraught and just paralyzed by everything he saw. Now, we all have battles, and I thank, thank God that I have not been in a real war situation. I, but we all have battles in life. And I think for me, what I got out of him is he took a year off of working in chaplaincy and he worked in gardening in a landscape company. And there's this scene where he has his hands in the dirt and he's planting a plant. And the only thing I could think of as this year was going by, which is pretty short on a movie, but he, his, he's tilling this soil and God is tilling his soul in his heart, healing him slowly over time. You know, during this chaos and horrific acts, Darren begins to doubt. But I got to tell you, if we don't doubt sometimes, we don't have our faith grow. There are times just in our lives where we doubt. We wonder where is Jesus? Where is God in our life? But we watch Darren through this time go through healing and find Jesus again and go on. Let's take a look at the clip where he is fully healed. A uh, true soldier feels so deeply that good people deserve to be safe and free that he is willing to risk losing the most valuable of things just to go and help them. And every soldier who serves in a war comes back with a medal. And it's just that sometimes you can't see it because it's on the inside. I don't feel like a hero. Because to me, the true heroes are the soldiers' families who also have medals on the inside and to their hearts. Like I know my family does. You know, I don't know what pain or hills or mountains or wherever you are in your life and what chaos sometimes goes on, right? Because it does. Life happens. But Jesus was there for Darren and Heather. And it was some of Darren's friends that he actually converted that came back alongside Darren to bring him back to faith. And that is what we are called to do. When one person is hurting, the rest of the body, the rest of the church come around those that need that support. That is what we are here for. That is how we show this love that rose on Easter morning to the world. If you don't remember anything from this message, I'd like you to remember this. That every miracle that Jesus did on this earth, every teaching that he taught, every step he took on this earth as he was on his ministry, 
every thorn that was on that crown, every mark in his flesh where a nail went through, and every time and moment he hung on that cross, struggling to breathe, and every day he was in the tomb. And then every re-energized cell that came up out of him on Easter morning when he rose, he did all of that because he loves you. John said, I have come to give life to the world and give it abundantly. He did it because he loves you, he loves me, he loves our families that stray away, he loves our friends. Wherever we are, that is the glorious message of Easter, Jesus meets us right there. You know, our challenge is just to accept the love that Jesus offers us. And when we accept it, you can't help but pass it on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the times when you've come into our life and lifted us up with your love. That when we thought all was lost or all was changed or nothing was going right, you showed up. And we thank you for the times when we are on the mountaintops, when all things are going well and your blessings seem to be pouring down upon us. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for your love and your, your endless and steadfast faith that you provide for us. We lift this up in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Won't you stand for our closing hymn? Page 310. He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy, hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never. stormy blast, the day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to
receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. And all God's people singing Alleluia said, Amen. Amen. After you.